would encourage, recommend that all governments start to focus in their fiscal arrangements on recovery because it is not if or when it will happen. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is charged to regional leaders. His call is even more relevant in this, the Atlantic hurricane season, which runs until November. While the government will focus on catastrophe bonds and other financial instruments, you can participate by preparing. Get information on how, followed by the news. Stay with us. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News from Monday, July 15. Residents of St. Elizabeth now have increased access to justice services. A new justice center was officially opened in Santa Cruz last Thursday. The facility was funded as part of an agreement between the government and the European Union. It's the sixth of 14 parish justice centers being established across the island. We're hoping that all 14 will be in operation before March next year. And also we are hoping the additional family courts will at least be started and some open because these are targets which we have to achieve, the 14 justice centers and an additional four family courts. The St. Elizabeth Justice Center was constructed on Coke Drive in under five months. It's expected to help clear case backlog and has been equipped to handle matters related to child diversion and restorative justice, as well as dispute resolution and other justice-related issues. The facility will also be a point of contact for the Costas of St. Elizabeth and the parish's Justices of the Peace. It also houses a mobile legal aid clinic. Head of the European Union delegation to Jamaica, Ambassador Malgorzata Vasilevska, says this and other centers are helping the country meet its obligations under the Jamaica Justice Sector Reform Program Agreement, which the government signed with the EU in 2016. To date, the government of Jamaica has either achieved or exceeded all its indicators under the Budget Support Program and has received disbur disbursement of 13 million euro, which is Jamaican $2 billion of expected 22 with the remainder due in 2020. Approximately $16 million has been spent to install a new elevator at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in Kingston. The installation was undertaken by the National Health Fund. It brings to six the number of new elevators that have been installed at hospitals across the island recently. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says Victoria Jubilee's old elevator has been in operation for 30 years and was due for replacement. We're responding to that report of the replacement need of elevators at Victoria Jubilee. And indeed, I want to commend those who have responded because while it is true that we have neglected to do so in many over a long time, it's important that as public health officials, whether as management or otherwise, we learn from our errors and we chart new courses to improve what we have done. In addition to the installation of the new elevator, the maternity hospital's lobby was tiled and painted to improve its physical appearance. Dr. Tufton says the ministry is on track to install three more elevators at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital this year. More than 250 young people will benefit from employment this summer under the Citizen Security and Justice Program CSJP-3. Secondary and tertiary level students aged 16 to 27 will be placed in public and private sector organizations over a four-week period. CSJP-3 communications and social marketing specialist Patrice Tomlinson-Nephew says the objective is to involve the youngsters in productive activity over the summer period. They'll also be able to earn some money that will help to supplement this, the household income and 
quite importantly, they're also being prepared for the work world. So they're told how to dress for employment, decorum that's expected, you know, all of the principles and the ethics, or the main ones, of course, of the workforce are instilled or imparted. And then there are follow-up visits by the CSJ, by CSJP personnel to ensure that they're meeting these standards. Ms. Tomlinson Nevio is speaking at a JIS think tank on Friday. She says the young people are selected from 50 communities across eight parishes that are engaged by the CSJP. Debate on the Tourism Workers' Pension Act 2019 was suspended in the Senate on Friday to allow for further consultations on a number of matters pertaining to the bill. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Pernell Charles Jr., piloted the bill, which seeks to establish a defined contribution pension scheme for hospitality industry workers. It was recently passed in the House of Representatives, but Senator Charles Jr. says it's important that the bill is properly implemented as Jamaica sets out to do what no other country has previously done. This will make Jamaica a world leader, a pioneer in providing tourism worker social security. It represents a commitment by the government to the social market arrangement, which is to, which is to ensure that appropriate legislation and regulation is developed to protect the vulnerable. Already, Mr. President and colleagues, we have been getting inquiries from other nations about our revolutionary pension plan. While supporting the bill, opposition Senator Wentworth Skeffrey called for a re-examination of the composition of the Board of Trustees. He suggested that it should include a worker and at least one member from the Confederation of Trade Unions. The proposed Tourism Workers' Pension Plan will cover all 18 to 59-year-old employees in the sector, including contract and self-employed individuals. Benefits will be payable at age 65 or older. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Jamaica, based on its location in the Caribbean basin, is at a position that is vulnerable to the eventualities of a hurricane season. Basically, we are expecting a normal, near normal season. It could go a little above, it could go a little before. What we are projecting is that we will see somewhere between 9 and 15 tropical storms developing. Four to eight of these will become hurricanes. That's what is expected. And out of those, we could see two to four being major hurricanes, meaning they will reach category three, four or five, creating significant catastrophic damage to the island's infrastructure. We really just have to prepare ourselves for anything that could happen. And these are the numbers that we see here. The National Works Agency's preparation for the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season has been ongoing. This is evident in the nature and scope of works that the agency has been undertaking island-wide over the last year or more. Just recently, approval was granted for the commencement of works under the GOJ's 2019 Pre-Hurricane Mitigation Program. This involves primarily drain cleaning and debushing activities. The program is the first and one of three routine drain cleaning activities which the NWA will undertake during this hurricane season.
the agency will carry out maintenance on our drain network during the course of the upcoming six months. And as I said earlier, we do it in three tranches. A total of $99.5 million have been allocated amongst MPs to undertake works in relation to the unclogging of drains and the desilting of channels where their constituents live, work, play, or do business. Where our major projects are concerned, the focus is more on improving existing drainage features as well as having new ones constructed. Extensive drainage improvement works are being and have been carried out along the Mandela Highway, Barbican Road, Hagley Park, Camp Road, work is also taking place there, Constant Spring Road, as well as along the 12.6 kilometer stretch from Ferris to Macfield over in Westmoreland. ODPEM, as Jamaica's disaster agency, is the heartbeat of our efforts. I urge every Jamaican to pay close attention to its messages and act in accordance with them. The warnings and encouragements to prepare and to better manage our immediate environment should not be seen as a nuisance. We wish ourselves the best. We wish all of you the best. We wish our Caribbean neighbors the best. As we go through this hurricane season, all of us are vulnerable and all of us need to watch each other's back. Have you ever been to Fort Charles in Port Royal? How about Fort Charlotte in Hanover? I know you must have seen those cannons and the other metal artifacts mounted at the forts. See how they are preserved for you, your children, and future grandchildren to enjoy. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the headquarters house, home of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. We're going to take you through some of the ropes in the methods in conservation, so please come along with us. Thanks for joining us in our conservation lab. You, we have here working with us Mr. Darrington Ferguson as well as Mr. Frank Gale and we'll be looking at some of the methods they will be applying to different material types for the preservation of our material culture of Jamaica. First of all, we have here some cannonballs that are usually found with some extent of corrosion. Mr. Ferguson is actually removing mechanically some of the concretion from a cannonball and after he has removed that then we would wire it this wired metal object would then we would then install in our elect electrolytic tank in the in process of electrolysis what we are actually doing we are primarily reversing the process of corrosion once it has been electrolyzed it would look something like this so we would then proceed to brush to remove any loose rust that would be left on it. We would then put the iron object in some pure water, which we call deionized water, and that would be heated to ensure that the metal itself would facilitate the extraction of any impurities that might be left in the body of the iron. After that, we would dry the iron object. Most times we dry it in alcohol and that would remove the water from the body of the object. And after drying, we would take a substance we call tannic acid, um, applying several coats, and it would form somewhat a stable surface for the iron object. And then the final stage is waxing to provide a coating or a lacquer on the surface of the iron object. Here we have Mr. Gale. He's actually applying orthophosphoric acid to remove slight rusting or um, corrosion from the case of a sword. He is actually um, using what we call a chemical as well as a mechanical means of so doing. We have close to it the extractor system, which is used to remove harmful fumes from the atmosphere in order to make the environment a much 
healthier one in which and a safer one for us to work. Lead corrodes by forming mainly lead sulfite and lead carbonate. So we would be soaking it first of all in ammonium acetate and that would basically remove within a few hours the lead carbonate. In order to remove the, any residue of ammonium acetate that might be left on the lead, we would then rinse it quickly for a short time period, just rinse it in a bath of a very dilute solution of um, hydrochloric acid. If there are any corrosion left at that stage, then we would remove that mechanically, either with a, very likely with a glass bristle brush. After that, we do as we would with the iron. Coming over here now, we have copper or copper material. We have been soaking this copper in um, a substance we prepare in the lab, which we call alkaline Rochelle salt. The alkaline Rochelle salt will remove from it largely the what we call bronze disease. So we use, we soak it in the solution. The chemi chemical will dissolve the um, bronze disease. After that has been dissolved, then we would rinse in, for example, a dilute solution of sulfuric acid to remove any slight impurities or corrosion products that might be left there. After that, we will, as we do with the other metals, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you were well informed by the information we've imparted today and you're welcome to join us at any time, particularly at our heritage sites. And when you see our heritage sites, you see the artifacts that are there, you will appreciate to a greater extent the effort that has gone in to its preservation. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Solid Power Jamaica is an energy company which was founded in um, 2010. About 2015, we embarked on a new concept where we want to actually look at waste energy a solution for Jamaica in, in, in particular. So we, we conceptualize um, using existing streetlights to convert into waste for our, our street lighting. And we successfully done that and we entered the National Innovation Competition in 2016 where we won the category um, in, in, in um, energy and energy efficiency for our street light. Street light was um, tested by the Bureau Standard and was certified to be sold on the Jamaican market. The government is actually embarking on a street light um, program where the problem at the moment is that at that time was that sometimes street lights are on or off and you don't really know unless you go on the, the, the location to do that, um, to check. So we embark on a smart lighting technology 
where we thought we could actually embed that into our um, recycled street light. And we successfully installed the smart lighting in our um, recycled light. And we are now able to control those lights remotely using our smart solar controller. So for example, we could stay anywhere in the world and turn these lights on via the internet. So all of our smart solar street lights are now solar driven. So we install solar in, in either as a standalone unit or as, as, a, as another concept that we are, we are actually promoting, which we call power wheeling concept, where you install solar at, any, at certain points across the country, inject that solar into the grid, and you actually um, power our existing lighting using that grid power. Um, also, we also have um, our standalone units. If, for example, you have a new stretch of light in a rural community or along the, 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 the Highway 2000, can all be powered from solar using our recycled street light and smart solar system. Um, our smart system can manage up to 200 lights on any one network. So we realize that having that sort of system allows us to have total control over, over street lighting. Bamboo is, is quite versatile. And since 2018, we have also embarked on, on using bamboo to make um, lighting equipment. So we managed to, to make a, a desk light, um, LED desk light out of bamboo that was successful. We actually um, sent that to the Bureau Standard. They have actually tested that, and um, that's supposed to be with us um, in short order. We also looked at what we call the, the Jamaican Sweet Home Sweet Home Lamp, and we also managed to conceptualize that into a, a light. And as you can see over there, it is well, it's a beautiful light, and we also have that light as a um, rechargeable light. So we're using phone batteries, and a phone charger to charge that um, light. The way in which the world is moving right now is about innovation. You think about something and you have a go at it. And if you look around you, there are challenges. Our thing was really predicated on the challenge that we, we had here with our existing lighting. Very, very um, inefficient and we thought of, thought of looking at how we could make that more efficient. So one, if, if, if one wants to go into any uh, um, business opportunity as it relates to um, innovation, I believe if you look around, you can see problems and then there's a solution to that problem. And that's what we believe innovation is all about. Fixing um, existing problem, right? And come up with good solution where you can um, you know, make an impact economically. During his recent visit to St. Lucia for the 40th regular meeting of the Heads of Government of CARICOM, Prime Minister Andrew Holness met with the Jamaican diaspora in that country. In addition to updating them on the economy and job opportunities, Mr. Holness spoke to government's work to curtail crime and violence on the island. Take a look. The control of violence, particularly violence related to crime, isn't always reactive. It's, it isn't always getting you know, boots on the ground, more police patrolling, even though that is your first response, you have to suppress and control. But you also want to prevent. And there are several preventative strategies that are now being employed. One of them is that we have to build our, our capacity to have intelligence as to what certain criminal groups would want to do. And the preventative strategies can come in diversion to get young people and divert them away mm -hmm. okay. from gangs, mm -hmm. right? You have to have strategies in deterrence 
right? And there are many deterrent strategies, but one of them is to enforce the law and to prosecute and bring people to court, and we are doing that. Uh, the, the other strategy is, of course, to control, to have what, what is called domain control. We have to control what is coming in our borders, and for many years we had no control over our seas, um, our sea borders, uh, are very porous, and we have made some massive investments in the capital infrastructure to control our borders, which will help to prevent the intrusion of guns and illegal contraband and, and human trafficking and the like. So we are doing quite a bit behind the scenes to address the issue of crime. There will be no snap of the finger, wake up tomorrow, and it, it will take time. But we are seeing, we're seeing results, um, and we will continue to persevere to make Jamaica the place of choice, to work, live, raise families, do business, and come back home. Oh. <laughs> right. And that's how we draw the curtains down on another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be sure to catch up with us tomorrow, round about the same time, right here on this station. We're available online at your leisure on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. There's also a mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. From our JIS family to yours, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.